I guess that's just life, really, isn't it? Right, here we go. Let's uh, let's restart. Ladies and gentlemen, it's coffee and memes. It's uh, I actually this is the second time round now for anyone watching on uh, YouTube or Facebook. Um, I'm afraid this is actually. Um, uh, Point two point oh. Uh, started the show, got about three minutes in, realised that it was only streaming on Threshold and not on YouTube or on Facebook. Uh, so I'll do a sort of um, uh, I'll do a too long didn't read for the intro. Basically, you got a nutsack full of the good stuff. You got big dick energy, and there's going to be a bunch of bastards, rogues, and vagabonds and vagrants who are going to try and take that big dick energy from me. But you can't let them. Come on, it's Monday. You got to get out there. Left, right, night, night. Come on, left leg hospital, right leg cemetery. That's how we're out here doing business, ladies lobsters. and gentlemen. It's freaking this lobster crew. It's lobster death cult. Facebook, YouTube, threshold. Come on, ladies and gentlemen. It's got for your memes. Steady job, a couple extra potatoes, that's all I want. You're getting on, you're pushing 30, Sluggy. You know, it's time to think about getting some ambition. Well, I always figured I'd live a little bit longer without it. Don't forget, kid, that what you're trying to do here is to be bright and chipper and entertaining and, and intelligent and sort of glitzy, and that's funny, and it's, it's, it's kind of cool, and it's interesting, and it's edgy, and all of that. It, it puts that facade of momentary charisma on you, and if you don't play that out, you actually fail. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Coffee and Memes on a Monday morning. Keeping it fresh, keeping it, keeping it real, keeping it roughly going in a straight line. You know, you got to, you got to course correct. It's nice to start the week off with um, sort of um, a a failure. Well, it means it's all sort of um, not downhill, not uphill. It's things can only get better. You know, like the depressing D Ream song where things have got so bad. So, so bad that they can only get better. Um, that's because I have you. L listen, guys. Hey, nice to be here on a Monday. Hope everyone had a nice weekend. Does breakfast still mean breakfast? You know, is, is the lobster death cult still a thing? I haven't checked. Uh, have we been um, uh, des Have we been designated a... Um, uh, have we been put on a watch list by any sort of government agencies yet? I uh, noticed that there was some sort of uh, wacky religious cult keeping uh, keeping slaves somewhere in the UK recently. I did have to, have to come out and say that it wasn't us. We're a decent, honest, God-fearing folk and we don't keep slaves. Not yet, anyway. It hasn't got to that point yet. You know, if everything goes tits up in the post-Brexit apocalypse, pfft, don't know, maybe we'll have to enslave jump-up DJs. It's possible, isn't it? You know, it's it's not out of the realms of possibilities. You know, stuff is going to be stuff's going to be wild when you know the where we start getting attacked by space debris, um, Brexit zombies, and I don't I don't know if there's going to be enough big dick energy to go around. It's it's a terrifying time. Uh, what have we got in the news? Man banned from betting shop for winning too much. That doesn't look very interesting. Uh, hashtag MJ Innocent uh, ads appear on London buses in protest against the Leaving Neverland documentary. Um, right. God, they got that out quickly, didn't they? Bloody hell. And bus advertising, not cheap. Where's that money come, come from? Eh? Who's funding this? This is a... Oh, there's a website... Uh, mjinnocent.com guess we're going to have a look at it aren't we mjinnocent.com um, okay facts don't lie people do that's got all the sort of hallmarks of guns don't kill people rappers do uh, Ma uh, Michael Jackson father singer dancer humanitarian pedo oh no pedophile Wade Robinson and James Safechuck uh, would have you believe he was a pedo, but what is the truth? Before you condemn him, please take a few minutes to understand some of the facts behind the stories that you have heard. Um, all right, there's looks like a bit of stuff to possibly get into off air. That, oh, that not loads. Oh, you can support them financially. Um, I watched the Leaving Neverland documentary, uh, sort of like that. Oh, it's harrowing. Not good, is it? It's not good. I don't, I don't know, you know, you don't, you don't, unless you were there and you're glad that you weren't, you know, who knows? It seems, I think he was a pedo. I think he did do some pedoing. Not nice. 
nice. It's not good, is it? It's not. No. It's a funny one though, isn't it? It's like now we're now okay. What tear him down? Tear it all down? Finish the um, the West End show? Oh, it's not in the West End, is it? It's Tottenham Court Road. Um, yeah, all of burn all his music. The book burning is well. The book burning has somewhat started. The, the the Simpsons are like, oh, we're not going to show the episode uh, with Michael Jackson in it anymore. It's like it's like twenty years old or something. Fifteen years old. Like we've all seen. No one would watch that anyway because like, oh, it's an old one. Oh, I've seen that one. It's yeah, Lisa, it's your birthday. You've seen it. It's uh, <sighs> don't know. You st- you still going to cut up a rug to Billy Jean on the dance floor? Don't know, everyone, will, everyone will have forgotten about it in you know a couple of weeks. Now go and you know just go back to norm, normal life of listening to Michael Jackson at office Christmas parties. And it's not good though. Is it? Oh, I don't know. This is possibly a little bit above my pay grade, really, isn't it? I'm supposed to do the stories about sex robots and where's legalized ganja recently, and you know other such things. Lobsters. Um. Anyway, let, let's. What else have we got in the news? Uh, yeah, well, I'm interested to find out about this massive glory hole that appears to be noshing off ducks somewhere in California. That's worth looking at. Uh, world's largest killer wasp has been found in China. He can fuck off. Uh, dad who promised 240 grand to man who'd marry his daughter scraps the tournament. That's a shame, isn't it? Gee, it's nice. I mean, I don't know much for her personality, but she's, you know, nice, well-turned-out young woman. She looks like she's uh, a sort of one of life's go-getters. She looks like she's got big dick energy, to be honest. Uh, dad's got a load of cash don't know it might be something I mean, he's called the tournament off I mean this was going to be something that I was just going to suggest to the lobster crew no, it's, you know everyone in there is decent honest and god fearing and you might uh, you know you'd make a good husband for anyone really so if you can get some cash at the same time psh, you're in two birds with one stone you know <clears throat> you could, you, I don't know that's, that's, yeah. Just, just leave that one. Uh, man told he was about to die by a doctor on a robot. That's a bit confusing. Why doctors? Oh, wow. Jesus, look at this. Uh, well, we'll get into this in a little bit. Okay, so this is a sort of uh, robot doctor situation whereby, yeah, it's a, well, it's a sort of art, it's a sort of torso robot, which has presumably got wheels on it or something, and a big video screen up the top, no arms. Like a giant iPad on the top with a doctor with some headphones on who is, uh, well, I guess telling people they're going to die. You kind of want a human to tell you, even not a human. This is like that film with George Clooney, isn't it, where they go around firing people and then they do it on video screens over Skype. And there's the thing now. <sighs> now they're telling people, telling people they're going to die on, on video screens. This is, this is the beginning of the end, really, isn't it? It's the beginning of the end. It's got like a permit for a pit, big pit, and just dug a big pit. And well, it's got paraglider, lands perfectly in Australia before getting his ass kicked by a kangaroo. It's about the most Australian story you're going to find, well, going to find today anyway. Uh, look, in terms of uh, shoe throwers, what have we got? Uh, the Upbeats, Volatile Cycle, going to play that break remix of Technomatic again, because that bears repeating. Uh, a few other Mephius remixes, uh, Molecular, uh, HLZ. I want to play that Andy Seabet again, actually. Hey, look, let's play that Gigantor remix of Work It, because it's a Monday morning, and Christ knows that's going to get you in the mood. Yes, 
all about the arts, baby. All about the arts. Giganta flipping the script on this one. Gigantor remix of Work It by Matthias. Yeah, that is on the uh, Manifest remix album by the Meth Juice. Uh, pour yourself a nice big glass of Meth Juice and just sling it down the hatch. Lovely stuff. Well done, Giganto. Giganto, of course, being one third of evil in tent, in case you did not know. Lobsters. Right, come on. World's largest killer wasp has been found in China. Straight up, fuck this guy. Seriously, honest, I, I swear to God, he tries to come around mine, there'll be trouble. He, on, uh, he will be treated with extreme prejudice if he tries to fly in through my, I don't know, cat flap or something like that. If he tries to burrow his way in, yeah, or he tries to sneak in through my letterbox, yeah, through the large hole that's been left by Clayton's book, which recently came dancing through my letterbox. If this, oh, if this twat, if this eight-legged, how many legs I got? Six. Oh, that couple hidden under the wings. I don't know. But this, like, multi-legged, pff, I'm not, anything with more than more than four legs, I, I, look, call me speciesist. But anything with more than four legs is not welcome in my house. That's it. I mean, I don't know. Start suggesting stuff with more than four legs that, you know, might be okay. Oh, look, and you know, like, daddy, daddy long legs or something. You know, just your common house spider. Okay, yeah, sure, fine. All right, but this twat, he's clearly, well, he's clearly into jump up, isn't he? Look at him. Like, he... He looks like he's just flown back from a bloody... DJ Gov back to back Mackie G session. He's probably on bass. Does anyone remember that when people used to call speed bass? Maybe it was. Was it different? Was it a different form of really nasty amphetamines? Maybe he probably smokes spice. He probably he goes out to jump up raves on a combination of spice and bass. Gets into fights, stabs people with keys. He get he get one of the, one of these situations. Get the key, keys in between the uh, knuckles and just uh, uh, digs like that. He's an absolute scumbag. Like you know, it's not gonna, you're not gonna kill anyone like that. But it's um, God, my uh, first ever girlfriend got stabbed with a key in the queue for the event in Brighton. That one, I don't know what's it called now. It's the one that's underneath the Odeon Cinema. Yeah, just randomly, someone stabbed her with a key. What is this? This is a long time. This is like 20 years ago. This is a, uh, yeah. And things have only gone downhill since then. Lord of mercy. Anyway, Smithers. I feel like it's been a long time since I've, uh, since I've read a Dominic Smithers article. Has my life been better or worse for it? Oh, well, we'll, we'll see. We'll now, um, we can use this as, you know, if the rest of the day just goes absolutely miserably, we'll know why. Uh, Dominic Smithers of the Lab Bible reports, reports, reports. He says, Rankin, your voice is out of control. You're obviously still ill. Why are you even doing the show? Well, I have to do the show because otherwise, what else are going to people do? What else are people going to do between the hours of 10 and 11 in the morning, quite honestly? So, look, I have, uh, e even under the terrible conditions of a mild man flu, I am, you know, I'm still here. 
Uh, no one likes wasps, and for good reason. They like jump up, uh, they stab people with keys, and they take base. Okay, specialists have discovered a new species in southern China that are believed to be the largest in the world. But seriously, can you imagine that little bastard? Just fly... Okay, it would sound like there was a drone in the house or something. Like Maybe when Gatwick got shut down for those few days, it wasn't a drone, it was just one of these bastards. Christ. He's got his Sony Walkman on with like a... I don't know, with a... Yeah, some, some latest jump-up mix in his headphones. He's... Uh, aptly named the Godzilla Hornet. Fuck that guy. Uh, it was found near the city of Pua in the province of uh, Yunnan. And it's thought to be the new subspecies of the deadly killer hornet, uh, which has claimed numerous lives. Jeez, it's got a wingspan nearly 10 centimetres. Look at the size of his ass. Jesus, he's like one of those Instagram girls. Maybe he's, he's just out there just doing squats. Ugh, ugh, and eating protein. Ugh, and then posting pictures on Instagram with, like, you know, pff, hashtag girl boss or something on it. Jesus, he needs he, he needs talking to. It's said to be part of the Vespa uh, Mandarina family. The body length of over six centimeters and a wingspan close to ten centimeters. It's the largest type of hornet ever found, and a right bastard by all accounts. It's far bigger than the Asian giant hornet or the subspecies, the Japanese giant hornet, which have body lengths of 4.5 centimetres and 4 centimetres respectively. But don't panic just yet. The giant Godzilla hornet is said to be only found in warmer, subtropical regions of eastern and southern Asia. Right. Honestly, if Brexit's going to keep these wasps out, it can't come soon enough. After analysing hundreds of spe specimens, uh, Zhao Li from the Hu Zai Insect Museum in Chengdu so that it's probably a newly discovered subspecies of the known killer hornets. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, but entomologists are carrying out tests to determine whether or not it really does like jump up or is this something that's just been made up on a ridiculous morning radio show. Uh, this is o this is the only huge discovery made by scientists. Oh, oh this isn't the only huge discovery. <laughs> that would be a weird sentence, wouldn't it? This is the only huge discovery made by scientists in recent weeks. Scientists really need to step their game up. No, it's not the only huge discovery made in recent weeks. In the la uh, last month, a team of wildlife ex wildlife experts found the world's largest bee. Yeah, um, was uh, recently uh, accosted in the street by a very sweet chap who lives at a sort of halfway house, I guess. Uh, which helps, I guess, uh, people with mental illnesses, uh, which is just around the corner from here. And he was like, you know, they found an enormous bee. I was like, oh, okay. Um, have they? Is it, How big? He was like, mm, about that big. I was like, oh, right. Head door. That sounds terrifying. I oh, know, luckily it's dead. Oh, okay, good news. Um, and then the next day in the Metro, they're like, yeah, I found an enormous bee. Yeah, the guy had obviously read the story before me and was just, you know, as a, as a point of public service and public information, was spreading the news. Just beware, there's an enormous bees out there. Luckily, this one's dead, but how many more could there be? You know, uh, Brexit can't come soon enough. Brexit, the uh, will of the British people. I was like, yes, no, 100%, mate. Uh, the insect was first discovered in 1858, uh, but has eluded scientists uh, since 1981. And several other examples were found. Um, bored of this story now. Thanks for that, though, Dominic Smithers. Uh, you're doing a fine job. You're doing the Lord's work, and I'm I'm just continually impressed with your service to not only Lad Bible but the world of journalism as a whole. Uh, what else do we have? All oh, manner of gummies, isn't there? Um, yeah. Okay. So should we find out about this? The doctors are delivering sort of news of people's impending death via robot now. <sighs> I don't know how I feel about this. Well, let's find out. A man told he was about a man has a man told he was about to die by a doctor on a robot. An elderly man being cared for in a hospital in America was informed he was going to die by a doctor via video link and what his family have described as a robot. Ernest Quintana, 78, who was being treated at Kaiser uh, Permanente medical hospital in Fairmont, California, was informed of the tra tragic news by a doctor on the robot screen who told him he only had a few days left to live. Family friend, uh, Julianne, slammed the hospital. Oh, I've always wanted to slam something. Slammed the hospital for its lack of care, saying it was not the way to show value and compassion to a patient. 
I'm inclined to agree, uh, Julianne. Sharing an image on a Facebook page, she wrote, please share this. This was regarding a friend's dad a couple of hours ago. This is not the way to show value and compassion to a patient. Shame on you, Kaiser. Um, here it is. Yeah. It's all a bit demolition, man, isn't it? It's, it's all a bit dystopian nightmare. A bit Black Mirror, isn't it? The face of bloody like the face of a pilled up Charlie Brooker appears on there. It's like, yeah. So, um, sorry about this, but I've only got a couple of days left, days left to live, mate. Uh, what? Who, what are you doing, Brooker? What are you doing here? Just why are you part robot? What's going on? Uh, just uh, getting into character for a new, a new episode of Black Mirror. Just me method acting. So, what, seriously though, have I only got a couple of days left? To... Yeah, I'm probably less actually. Oh, Brooker, seriously, stop playing games with me. Like, is this just one of your, one of your little stunts? Is this, this am I, I going to go on YouTube or something? Why, why are you on pills? I just, uh, it's part of the method acting. Oh, have you got any chewing gum? I can't give you chewing gum. You're on the other side of a video screen, Brooker. Seriously, sort your act out. This is ridiculous. What are you even playing at? Oh, just anyway, we're probably about a day and a half to live now. Oh, just forget it. Uh, this is the robot doctor that came into Kathy's father's ICU room late Monday night and told him he had no lungs left. Jesus! <laughs> Only option is comfort care. Remove the mask, helping him breathe, and put him on a morphine drip until he dies. Man, this is rough. Uh, thank you, Fermont Kaiser, for your compassion to a man who is 100% aware and alert. The robot doctor... Mate, what do they think they they were trying to like? They thought, oh well, look, he's he's almost gone. He probably won't even notice that it's a robot. Do you think that's there's that the thought process? Christ, technology at its best. Uh, had I have been there, I would have told him to turn his <laughs> to turn around and roll his ass out and send a human. Yeah, fair enough. Uh, do you, she goes on to confirm he sadly passed away two days after being admitted to the hospital. Speaking to the BBC, uh, Mrs. Quintana's granddaughter said, I look up and see this robot at the door. The next thing I know, he's telling him, I got the MRI results back and there's no lungs left. There's nothing to work with. I'm freaking out inside and trying not to cry. This is horrendous, isn't it? I mean, this is rather terrifyingly the way that stuff is sort of going to go. <sighs> Do you think it's going to... Oh, God, it's a bit minority report, isn't it? Do you think rather than like, you know, when eventually, you know, we, it will happen to us all eventually when we all get arrested for a, a tweet or something. Do you think just like a robot with a screen is going to turn up and uh, just grab you and just stick you on tack? Just grab you with this one of its sort of Bender-style robot arms. Grab you by the leg, turn you upside down, stick a tag on you and then tell you if you leave the house, you'll just be vaporised or something. That, that'd be it. That'd be a lot condemned to house arrest for 30 years for a tweet or something i don't know uh right look, let's get a let's get another music record on uh one of these new pop songs uh so here's a good new pop song this is by uh jungle remixed by spectrosol it's called platoon this will be climbing up the hit parade no doubt <laughs> Joe in the chat, I'll give you that one. An idea for a show, Top of the Drops. You can dress up as Jimmy Savile for it. <laughs> Go. 
that, that, that would be a comedy sketch to end anyone's career, wouldn't it? <laughs> Uh, that's the Spectrosile remix of uh, Platoon by Jungle. I was very disappointed uh, when I first uh, became aware of the music act Jungle, because they're not Jungle. Uh, but that's a lovely bit of gear. Please, please about that. I was just reading this thing about Elon Musk. Uh, I- I- here he is. Uh, no, here he is. Um, there he goes. Jasper Hamill reports. No shares on this one, Jasper Hamill. Unlucky, mate. Uh where are we? Uh, has Elon Musk's weed smoking landed him in trouble with the Pentagon? Well, let's find out. The moment Elon Musk spoke to, smoked weed on the Joe Rogan experience has gone down in internet folklore. Uh, but it's been claimed the billionaire's blazing prompted the Pentagon to review his security clearance. He's allegedly been like, you're just making this up, Jasper Hamill, aren't you? Yeah, making it up. Uh, He's allegedly been asked to refile his SF-86 security form, which is used to apply for a top-level pass. So Elon Musk had a uh, top-level pass with the Pentagon. So that's the thing. I wonder what he did. Oh, oh, he can find out about 9-11. I wonder... You know what? I wonder what Elon's take on 9-11 is, because if anyone would know whether or not jet fuel could melt steel beams, it'd be Elon. You know what I mean? I just... Digging a pit. Just got a permit for a pit. It's got like a permit for a pit. Uh, after the form is fi- uh, filled in, the government is then free to conduct background investigations, uh, reinvestigations, and continuous evaluations of persons under consideration for or retention of national security positions. Uh, here is Elon, Elon here, pictured against the backdrop of some marijuana leaves. One of the questions on this form involves drug use and asked if the candidate has taken any illegal substances in the past seven years. Uh, Of course, cannabis is no longer outlawed in California. Well, then it's not illegal, is it? Um, It's no longer outlawed in California, which is where Joe Rogan hosts his widely popular YouTube shows. Uh, But it's illegal in Virginia, the state in which the Pentagon's headquarters stand, as well as on a federal level. If Musk is found to have taken illegal drugs, which he won't because they're not illegal, um, he could be in trouble because it's absolutely grounds for termination or loss of clearance in a federal employee or contractor currently uses, attorney Mark Zaid told Bloomberg. It's hard to prove someone being uh, has been indulging in drugs like cocaine, which leaves the body quickly and cannot be detected in blood or urine within days of a binge. Um, even a test of a hair follicle uh, only detects cocaine for up to 90 days. Good to know. Cannabis, on the other hand, hangs around in the body for much longer, so it can be detected for months after smoking it. When appearing on Joe Rogan's show, Musk said he, was a, he wasn't a regular smoker of the herb, but he had a big old puff on a sub- suspicious-looking rolled cigarette. It's legal, right? he asked. Uh, we have written to SpaceX for comment. Well, I'll tell you what, Jasper Hamill, the day in which SpaceX replies to you for, one, for a comment, I'll eat a grown man's ass. How about that? I'll eat your ass, Jasper Hamill. I will eat it like a delicious cupcake. 
I will chow down on that, on that ass. Um, you know, obviously, if uh, you know, if you're up for it. If not, fine. We'll just you know carry on with our lives. Just putting that out there. That's all I'm saying. If SpaceX say, dear Jasper Hamill, we are big fans of your work with the Metro, and we would like to comment uh, as such. No, Elon has not had his security clearance revoked as uh, weed is not illegal. Um, thanks. Goodbye. Yeah. Well, you never know, do you? You never bloody know. Right, what else we got? Oh, yeah, here's a bit of fun for you, sort of, in a way. Um, Jaguar Maul's woman who climbed over zoo barrier to take a selfie. Uh, this is what I believe they call Darwinism. Um, this is just... I mean... Oh, no, you can, I'm, not, I'm not judging here, but there is uh, a, a lower back tribal-looking tattoo. Just, just, just thought it was worth noting, isn't it? A woman was attacked by a jaguar at a zoo in Arizona after climbing over a fence to take a selfie with it. What did you think was going to happen? Like, in, in what reality do you think that would be a good idea? The female animal, typical female behaviour, isn't it? You go in there, just try and have a good time, they lash out at you. Uh, the animal reached out and clawed her hand and only let her go when a witness di uh, distracted her with a water bottle. Paramedics were called to the scene. And a woman was taken to hospital with non-threatening injuries. Bet you won't do that again, though, will you? Witness Adam Wilkerson, uh, who was at the Wildlife, uh, the Wildlife World Zoo, Aquarium and Safari Park in Litchfield Park, Arizona, uh, with his mother and two kids, said the incident caused pandemonium. Harry, I hear a young girl and that screaming for her. But I thought, what the fucking hell is going on here? Like, I rush over and see this girl. She's got hands on, hands on a fucking Jaguar. She's in a bloody Jaguar for a bloody cage and that, like. And the Jaguar's got a Reggie by the hand and that, like. I thought, I'm fucking way. If it weren't for me mum's quick thinking with the water bottle, the Jaguar wouldn't have let her go and they're probably in there eating her face off and that, like. And then they might have shot the Jaguar. And the last thing we need right now is another fucking Harambe. Oh, yeah, fair enough. Understandable. So what do they do with this water bottle? What's this water bottle trick? Wildlife World Zoo director Mickey Olson confirmed that the five-year-old Jaguar would not be euthanized as it was not her fault. Good. Thank God. We're starting to learn, aren't we? Uh, like, you know, how many more poor, dead, perfect boys like Harambe will it take before people buckle up and fly right? Uh, he said that the zoo would never harm an animal based on human behavior. Good. Well, well done. Every time that you have an incident in a zoo, uh, you're going to double check it and meet with your staff to try and figure out a way to stop that incident from happening again. Ban people, I think. Ban, ban people. Okay? Just, just keep your zoo. Just don't let any humans in there. But when people do not respect the barriers, there's always a chance there might be a problem. I wonder if they mentioned Harambe. Come on. Come on, you thought you'd put that in at the end. Of course, we all remember the tragic day in the um, Cincinnati Zoo when the perfect boy was assassinated. They say he had information about Hillary Clinton, but uh, the CIA took him out. He was the perfect boy. R.I.P. in peace, Harambe. What is that noise? Better not be the apocalypse. I'm not bloody. I'm not dressed for it, quite honestly. Uh, right, look. What else? What we got in terms of the fucking she throwers? Let's have this break remix of uh, Bristol by Technomatic. Lovely bit of gear. It's time for jazz time on Coffee Memes. Pull up an Elon cigarette. Spark one for Jesus. Pour yourself a cup of Maker's Mark. Oh, sit down with your best gal. Close the curtains. The rest of the world don't need to see this. Slip off your lobster socks. Nuzzle down your skinny jeans. Shit's about to get crazy mad romantic. Oh, baby. Do you want to share half a pinger? Mmm. -hmm. Maybe just gum a little bit. Oh, baby. Do you like to throw footwear? Pulling out one up for all the massive crew inside, making a noise. Bringing down some brisk flavor. Listen it. Listen it.
that one up for all the massive crew inside, making a noise, bringing down some Bristol flavor. Listen it. Big Lee, he's just just pledged on Patreon. You're a good boy. You're all good boys and good girls who've pledged on Patreon. Thank you kindly. Yeah, that's a break remix of Bristol by Technomatic, and that's a goddamn jam. Lobsters. Stan, Sam. Sam says it's been out for ages, but, you know, whatever. It's a good tune, isn't it? Keith in the chat. He says, my daughter has a little gorilla cuddly toy, and uh, my missus is well pleased because I convinced the kid to call it Harambe. Uh, she took it to school uh, on show and tell day and told the teacher its name. That's wonderful. Um, I, I've got a... Um, I don't know if I've wore it on the show, but I've got a Harambe Christmas jumper. It says, like, Harambe loved... Harambe Christmas. It says, and then it was made a few years ago. Me and my brother made it. My brother designed it. And uh, it's got some really weird hashtags on it. It's got like, the hashtags are like Brexit means Brexit. <laughs> Take back control. Uh, hashtag 420 blazer or something like that. Uh, confusing times. Confusing times. Uh, anyway, look, uh, what else have we got? Oh, some robot news. What's this? Uh, the BMW uh, pedestrian detection system works really, really badly. Um, but sort of fun should we just oh look should we just do this glory hole thing to get it out of the way video captures moment bird falls down gigantic glory hole in, in canada <laughs> okay uh incredible video footage has emerged that shows a lonesome bird being sucked into a giant glory hole in the middle like, who's who's calling it a glory hole like it, it's in quotation marks everywhere who's calling it you tom wood of the lad bible a eh? me well i am i'm but I'm just reading it here. No, it's not what you're thinking. Get that mind out of the gutter. <laughs> Fuck off, Tom Wood. Actually, put your mind back into the gutter as that's sort of what the hole is. Let me explain. The video was shot at a place in California called Lake Berryessa. In the middle of this lake, it's not actually a lake. It's a huge spillway known as a glory hole. It's a 200-foot drain that is meant to catch water when the reservoir starts to overflow. The footage is captured by Rick Fowler. Big, big wreck. Right, let's have a little watch of this fucking glory hole. Right, come on. Yeah, right, it's a big hole. Big pit. It's got like a permit for a pit. Permit for a big, big Oh pit. no, the duck's going and too close. You're too close. Fly, fly. Oh no. <laughs> and they're all wow. laughing. That duck is bloody pate now. Jesus. Come on, he's going to try it again. Come on, this time. You can do it this time. No, no, no. <laughs> Oh, why didn't you fly? You got wings. Wow. Fucking Darwinism at its best. All right, not a third time. Come on. Christ. You idiot. I have some sympathy for you, but oh, wow. Look at it from a great height. That's pretty cool, isn't it? Um, kind of looks like an eye, and the rest of the dam is the mouth, and it's like a big fishy eating, eating my things down below. Yeah. Or oh, it's just vomiting, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> oh. Whack, it shot it out. What on earth is going going on? Uh, 
Uh, the duck took a wild ride, but did not make it out to the other side. Okay, so we ended up getting sucked into the gaping vortex. Did it get noshed off down there? Who knows? Maybe we'll never know. Uh, the video has since been shared on social media by Rick's cousin, Tori, who captioned the video, Duck took a wild ride, but did... Uh, oh, but did make it out to the other side. Wow. Um, that's an emotional roller coaster due to my inability to read. Now, not everyone is entirely convinced that the bird did eventually make it out from the other side. Oh, God, come on. Like, just let me know. Uh, after all, even being able to fly might not be enough to save you from a plummet down a swirling whirlpool hole. Pool, hole pool, whirlpool hole. Uh, despite that, Fowler insisted that the bird flew off after the ordeal. It simply went to the bottom of the 200-foot dam, emerged on the other side, presumably feeling a little flustered, composed itself, and flew off. Uh, Fowler told the Guardian, Thwack! It shot out the other side like a bullet. <laughs> it looked like a rag doll, like it was dead. Uh, he continued, Nobody ever thinks of anything going down that thing and being able to survive. But it survived, all right. I watched it. <laughs> Bang! Liquid football. <laughs> he must have a leg like a traction engine. Um, well, that's okay then. Cool. All right, thank God. So did he get noshed off down there? I guess you're going to have to talk to him in bird to get fucking Dr. Doolittle in there to have a word. All right, listen, man, he went down the glory hole. What's going on down there? Oh, listen, man, I don't want to talk about it. It's like, probably, it's like Bergheim down there. Seriously, just, just, just don't go. It smells weird. It's just a lot, lot, lot of lads in leather. And, you know, God bless them and that, but pff, it's just, I guess it's just not really my scene. You know, I'm just a, I'm just, just a duck, man. I'm just doing duck stuff. Quacking, looking for bread, that sort of thing. I'm, pff, I don't know, it's just dark techno clubs full of, you know, just... Geezer's going at it. I mean, I'm not having a go. I'm just, I'm a duck. You know what I mean? All right, okay, well, you know, thanks for your time anyway. Yeah, cheers, dude. You got any bread? No, I haven't got any bread. I'm going to fuck off then. All right, All right. Jesus, sorry. Um, okay, I think that's probably, um, that's the glory hole covered, really, isn't it? I don't think there's much more to that. Giant wasp, no, nope, done in. Uh, Daddy promised 240 grand to man who married his daughter. Scraps tournament. Let's find out what's going on here. Rebecca Shepherd, uh, she's uh, generally generally pretty savvy with these things. Bad news, guys. The Thai multimillionaire who offered 240 grand to a man to marry his daughter scrapped the plans to go ahead with the tournament because too many applied. <sighs> How many were you expecting? Well, things could have gone worse, I suppose. It could have been ditched because no one applied, which on second thoughts might actually be more appealing. Uh, Anot Rothong, 58, owns a thriving... Durian Fruit Farm in Chumphon Province, southern Thailand. Which means he's more than just a bit wadded. So he decided to take the minuscule matter of his daughter's future into his own hands. Uh, well, they do say money is power. Um, but now, according to the Daily Mail Online, the, farmer, the farm owner, who had to cancel his plans after 10,000 men came forward hoping to marry his 26-year-old daughter... Uh, who helps run the family business. Uh, initially, Mr. Rothfong planned to hold a three-month tournament at his farm in a bid to narrow down the quest. I imagine uh, it would look like... Do you ever remember on uh, Transworld Sport in the morning, they would have those like Japanese endurance tests? A, bit, a little bit like Takeshi Castle, Takeshi's Castle, but much more violent. Uh, like that sort of thing, basically, where you just have to endure three months of just... It's like working in a bloody... It's, it's, it's basically, it's like being in a Soviet gulag. For three months, you're breaking rocks, you're just doing pointless labour for the sake of labour. At the end of it, though, you get yourself a, a, a lovely-looking bride and 240 uh, bags. Pretty decent, isn't it? I mean, it could it'd be a little bit like one of those um, reality TV shows, like the SAS one or the, um, the Bear Grylls, The Island sort of uh, thing. A little bit like that, but you get married at the end. I, I think there could be a um, gap in the market for reality programs like that. Yeah, because he could, look, he could, he could have ended up earning more than the 240 grand out of it by televising it, or at least a web series. Like bloody Netflix would have picked up on that. No problem. And uh, yeah, I mean, you could do, you could, people would, I mean, people will do horrible things just for the possibility of getting on TV, let alone the cash and the bride. I mean, you throw the cash and the bride into the mix, people will, people will do harrowing things for your entertainment, <laughs> for our entertainment. And uh, I, for one, I, 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 I think um, 
absolutely, definitely. I'm in fact starting to think maybe all all weddings should be conducted like this. Yeah, the father of the bride sets up some sort of um, reality show where basically geezers uh, compete against each other in really terrifying, brutal events uh, over a three month period. And they get they they get the bride, and obviously the bride has no say in this whatsoever. That's this is the new dystopian reality that we're going to be living in post Brexit. Um, it's going to be a little bit a little bit Handmaid's Tale. It's like a cross between the Handmaid's Tale and um, uh, Takeshi's Castle. <laughs> that's what it's going to be like post Brexit. I think and that um, that's fine by me. I think that'll be okay. Yeah. It's gonna be yeah, a bit sort of twenty eight days later, Handmaid's Tale, Takeshi's Castle. That is what it's gonna be like in the event of a no deal Brexit. I think. And I for one welcome it. And with those giant bloody wasps flying around everywhere. Ah, oh, and robots telling people they're gonna die. It's uh that that's the future conservatives want, isn't it? That, that's what they're after. That's the future the Tories want. Lobsters. Oh Lord of bloody mercy. Right. Let's have a last bit to play us out. Uh, what, have we, what, have, what have we got here? Dead Owls, spelt with a four. We've had that uh, various uh, various times, in fact. Uh, volatile Cycle. Uh, the beginning. This is on the Cause for Concern album. Oh, no, we haven't. We haven't had, we haven't, have we had that upbeat bit yet? I don't think we have. I mean, if I'm going mad, please do tell me. Uh, it's called Disorder by the Upbeats. It's an absolute romper stomper. saying this would do damage up in other dance and I'm glad you agree
disorder by the upbeats. It's a fine slice of the good stuff right there. Hopefully tomorrow I don't sound like Frank Butcher on 8 Bains. Sorry, guys. Just a guy in a room just doing his best. Yeah. Um, just to uh, finish the show, I would like to thank the VIP list for making this crazy train possible. Um, <clears throat> look, thanks so much to everyone that contributes on the Patreon. This is uh, very, very kind of you. And without you, it sort of wouldn't be possible. I'd just... I'd, I'd just just, just wouldn't basically. Um, it would, yeah. It just, just, just would not be a viable option. Um, so, thank you. Without, yeah, without you, I would be nothing. Uh, and a, a reminder, of course, the app is coming along nicely. It should have some designs in the next couple of days, uh, which I will share with everybody of it looking all lovely and fancy and beautiful. Mr. Um, Mr. Mrs. Um, Z Z uh, Threshold Two Point uh, with its lovely, lovely archive page. If um, but for okay, so what I'm thinking is for 2.0, there will be an archive where you will have all the old shows, and you'll be able to click on your favourites, and you'll be able to click to get notified when there are new, um, new episodes of your favourite shows from your favourite hosts like. Hi Rankin, Irregular Joe, uh, Hugh Downer, aka Duff. Goldtop, Combine Radio, uh, Ames MC, and all of the others, Scientific FM. Um, and uh, yeah, so you'll be able to get notified when there are new episodes or when they go live. Um, also, I think I will make it so that we can embed if there are videos to accompany the shows because um, Mr. Merck uh, doing his Eastern Front show uh, is is streaming on the fa- uh, on the threshold of the threshold youtube channel if you've not subscribed to that um it's there's there is a link in the youtube description um you can find it the uh threshold youtube channel so i'll be able to stick all those in there as well but i think then what would be nice for the update after that would be able to give people the ability to like and comment on the individual episodes of shows that would be cool wouldn't it if you think that that's a good idea let me know or if you have any other ideas of how you think uh of of good features that you would like to see in an archive um it would also be nice to be able to share links to individual episodes episodes would be a cool thing to have um but yeah a sort of a, a comment section within within it for individual shows would be pretty cool actually uh, and then we'd be able to get track lists and stuff in there and everything and so on and so forth. And then once we all have that, I'm going to do a massive push on getting new shows, new hosts, new cool things. Hopefully some more uh, talk shows. I think that would be really good. Um, so particularly if anyone has uh, an idea for a talk show that they would like to do. Uh, I'm, 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 I'm all ears. Um, also tomorrow evening, uh, Dylan King Cannibal is going to be on the podcast He's going to be coming in, chatting, chatting the breeze with me, talking about all things that are good, all things that are bad, all things in the world, or, you know, just life in general, life and music and, you know, all of the things. Uh, so that'd be good. Um, I'll be back, of course, tomorrow morning at 10 a.m. <clears throat> and uh, Lady Squiffington's in on Wednesday on Coffee and Memes. Just hang out, be a bit of fun. Uh, right, look, VIP list. If you want your name on this list, you can get it on there by supporting us on Patreon for ten dollars a month or more. You'll also get your name on the founders list in the app, in the new app. So you can join the ranks of Oliver Oliver Hooper, Nicholas Gonclaus, Tom Ryan, Reese Moss, and Squidgy Beats Parsons, Paulie Hutton, Kieran R, uh, Michael Kaczynski, uh, Matthew Tompkins, Dave Long, Joel po- Joel Potter, Cole Murphy, Sam Howard, Tony J, Richard Patterson, Jack Murphy, Tom Cam, Stephen Harris, Matthew Bullard, Zara Pickle, Jerome Van Thunderbutt, Mike Pye, Anthony Walker, Lily Unsub, Richard Franks, Thomas Hall, Chode Ryder, Andrew Hyderabad, John Finnison, BDR Crew, Peter Blatchford, Austin Griefkeeper, Gennady Lightfield, Ryan Glazer, James Parry, Tom- Dave Thompson, Hendo Bartendo, Lady Squiffington, Liam the Menace Underwood, Dan Fucking Morris, a guy with no STDs, Justin Mercer, Ames MZ, Josh Williams, Rob Humphrey, Shibby T, Coco Shiva, Dan Elton, Tyron Wilmore, Mr. Pope, Dark Progressive Psytrance is actually superior to drum and bass, Nicholas Lawsey, Damon Rayner, 
Chris Brakes, The Build, uh, Carissa uh, Barthelson, Odin Bates, and Lee Fuller. Like from the corners of my mind, Misty Watercolored Fuller, the way we were. Thank you for listening, everybody. I will be back at 10 a.m. tomorrow, hopefully sounding a little bit less like a frog that smokes spice. Um, hopefully. Okay. I love you. Goodbye.